How will the Snapdragon 8 Elite powered Samsung Galaxy S25 Ultra stack up against its predecessor, the S24 Ultra, as well as the OnePlus 13, Vivo X200 Pro, and iPhone 16 Pro Max in five different benchmark tests, where we'll be testing out battery drain, heat dissipation, throttling score, and frames per second. All phones have been set to the exact same brightness levels using a lux meter. All of them have been updated to their latest available software updates. All of their CPUs are running on three nanometer process nodes except for the S24 Ultra which runs on 4 nanometers. The S25 Ultra and OnePlus 13 are both rocking Snapdragon 8 Elite chipsets but the Samsung's is overclocked at a whopping 4.47 gigahertz which is the highest of the lot. Both of them along with the Vivo have no efficiency cores even though they all have 8 total cores except for the iPhone which only has 6 cores. They all make use of LPDDR5X RAM and UFS 4.0 storage however the iPhone sticks to NVMe storage. All of them have 120 hertz refresh rates LTPO displays, they have all been set to their highest possible screen resolutions, and all of them will be using their respective high performance modes if available. Today we will be running through the latest versions of Antutu version 10, Geekbench 6, 3D Mark Wildlife Extreme, 3D Mark Solar Bay, and 3D Mark Steel Nomad Lite. And in between each benchmark, we'll be noting down each phone's temperature changes. How much better is the new S25 Ultra compared to its predecessor, and can it keep up with other top-end Android flagships, as well as Apple's latest offering? This is TechNick, and without further ado, let's find out. Before we get things started, we'll be checking their battery percentage at the start of the test and we'll be comparing this at the end of the test to see how they drain in terms of their milliamp hour per minute readings. We'll be using an infrared heat gun with an emissivity level of 0.5 since it's the most accurate for electronic devices and we're sitting at a room temperature of around 23 degrees Celsius. All phones have been sitting idle for a while now and in case you're wondering, at the start of the test in terms of idle temps, the OnePlus is the hottest and the iPhone is the coolest. And now finally jumping into our first benchmark test, which is indeed Antutu version. 10. Now the biggest thing we have to talk about here is that a lot of people say oh you can't compare Apple with Android devices in terms of Android and iOS because they run different APIs. That is true in terms of Antutu so you can't really compare GPUs and Vulkan scores. But Antutu version 10 has been more optimized in terms of CPU memory and user experience so it's more comparable than before. Now in terms of actual version 10 it has changed up in terms of CPU multi-core parallel processing. GPU now uses Unreal Engine 4 with CPU seasons as the high stress test and Coastline 2.0 for ordinary GPUs, but none of these devices are that ordinary since they're all very, very powerful flagships. Memory has been optimized in terms of ROM to improve test efficiency. RAM has been split in two for bandwidth and latency to better demonstrate LPDDR performance. User experience now includes PDF processing, large pixel images processing, and there is now video processing which uses decoding of H.265 video files and encoding of H.264, and there is now now a new section with video editing since a few people like to video edit on their devices. Now in terms of their actual chipsets, the Snapdragon 8 Elite overclocked version which is for Galaxy seen in the S25 Ultra is only better in terms of its main cores, its prime cores, because it is sitting at 4.47 GHz as opposed to the standard 8 Elite's 4.32 GHz prime cores that we see inside the OnePlus 13. But we'll get back to that in a sec. When it comes to temperatures after N22, the S25 Ultra only gained a few more degrees Celsius compared to the S24 Ultra. The Vivo gained more temp than the OnePlus, but the OnePlus got the hottest, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. If its outside temp is hot, it means it's dissipating heat correctly to keep the inside of the device cool. The iPhone added the least temp and ended off the coolest. Now jumping into our next benchmark test, that being Geekbench version 6. The only thing that's really changed here between 6 and 5 is that multi-cores are now tested by one workload used and all cores work together on that shared objective, whereas Geekbench version 5 used multi-cores tested by multiple individual tasks. Now back to the chipsets. The 8 Elite for Galaxy also has an overclocked GPU which runs at 1.2 GHz as opposed to the standard 1.1 GHz. Now while the Snapdragon 8 Elite chips do indeed have two main cores, the MediaTek Dimensity 9400 seen inside the Vivo technically has four main cores. We'll get to that in a sec, but back to temperatures for now. After Geekbench, the S25 Ultra gained the most temp, but the OnePlus still 
still landed up the hottest and the iPhone the coolest. It's normal for temps to drop off the Geekbench as it's not as long or as demanding as Antutu. But if temps drop by a lot, like you see here with the Vivo, it's a good indication of throttling, which means that the device has lowered its performance to prevent overheating and cool itself down. And now jumping into 3D Mark, three of our benchmark tests are all found within the same app. The first one is Wildlife Extreme, then we'll be jumping into Solar Bay and then ending off with Steel Nomad Light. Now in terms of just Wildlife Extreme, it's worth noting that this is designed for mobile graphics and it is a benchmark rendered at 4K. So these phones should not struggle with this at all because they're all flagship phones kitted with flagship CPUs and GPUs, but 3 d Mark in general is more primarily focused on GPUs here. Now in terms of our next one, which is Solar Bay, it actually uses ray tracing and ray tracing is actually hardware accelerated within all of the chipsets on these phones. Here is Solar Bay now, and it is a ray tracing bench for high-end mobiles and lightweight laptops. Now back to the chipsets over here. The MediaTek Dimensity does not have as high a clock speed in terms of its main core as the Snapdragon 8 Elite chips that we see in the Samsung and the OnePlus, but the Vivo housing the MediaTek chip does have a super performance core, which the others do not. And then it has three additional prime cores and four performance cores with no efficiency cores. And while the clock speed on the iPhone is quite high, over 4 gigahertz, it's not quite as high as the Snapdragon Elite phones over here. What is worth mentioning though is that the iPhone's A18 Pro chip has the highest 1.68 gigahertz speeds in terms of its six core GPU. Next up is the MediaTek Dimensity with a 1.612 gigahertz GPU. Then like I mentioned earlier, the 8 Elite 4 Galaxy runs at 1.2 gigahertz while the standard at 1.1 gigahertz. And the overclocked version of the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 seen inside the S24 Ultra runs at one gigahertz. And just by the way, Steel Nomad Lite, which we just ran through, is a non-ray traced benchmark rendered at 1440p resolution, which is intended for high-end mobiles and lightweight PCs. We only measured the temps after all three 3D Mark tests, as they are only a minute long each. The OnePlus still ended off hottest and the iPhone coolest, but this time the Samsung gained the least temp and the Vivo jumped right back up, which indicates it was performing at its absolute best. Now when we look at overall temps from start to finish, the iPhone gained the least and ended off the coolest, while the Vivo gained the most, but the OnePlus ended off the hottest. Usually phones that run hotter suffer when it comes to battery drain, since they kept working extremely hard. And since both Samsung temps were identical, their battery drain was exactly the same here. Yes, they both have the same sized battery, but it's actually impressive considering the S25 Ultra would have pushed harder, but it was countered by its more efficient chipsets and more efficient software. The Vivo throttled during the test, so it's no surprise to see it receive a better milliamp hour per minute reading when compared to that of the OnePlus, which drained the most leaving the iPhone with the best milliamp hour per minute reading. However, the iPhone placed dead last in Antutu, which was only slightly beat by the S24 Ultra. The S25 Ultra performed quite a bit better than its predecessor here, but it was beat by the OnePlus 13, which placed first. I guess the overclocked Snapdragon 8 Elite chip found in the S25 Ultra isn't as impressive as we had hoped. That said, the S25 Ultra actually got a higher score than the OnePlus in terms of Geekbench single core score, but the iPhone came out on top by quite a lot. Unfortunately, the Vivo came last here due to throttling. When it comes to Geekbench multi-core scores, the Vivo once again placed last due to throttling, but this time the iPhone surprisingly placed third, which was beat by the OnePlus and the S25 Ultra, which took home the win this time. But the Vivo bounced back in 3 d Mark Wildlife Extreme, coming ahead of the OnePlus and S25 Ultra for that first place spot. The iPhone just barely beat the S24 Ultra here. The Vivo's victory was short-lived though, as the OnePlus 13 placed first in 3 d Mark Solar Bay, with the rest of the placements remaining the same and the iPhone only just edging ahead of the S24 Ultra. The iPhone once again placed ahead of the S24 Ultra in 3 d Mark Steel Nomad Lite, but this time the Vivo bounced even further back as the S25 Ultra pulled slightly ahead. The OnePlus 13 once again took home another win. After running through six different benchmark scores with Geekbench split into two, I managed to obtain their average placements using a simple calculation. Overall, the OnePlus 13 placed first, the S25 Ultra came in second, the Vivo made it to third, the iPhone came fourth, and the S24 Ultra ended last. But the iPhone performed the best in terms of temperature and battery. As always, this is Tech Nick, and I'll catch you in the next one.